Hello there, welcome back. Before we get into the proper video, I just want to um, say two things. The first one is, this video is dedicated to a fella called Jeff, who was a friend of mine, and unfortunately he died around Christmas time. Um, I didn't find out till quite recently. I thought I hadn't seen him for a while, and um, it was quite a tragic thing anyway, but Basically, I want to dedicate this video to Jeff because he was banging his outdoor sports and he was a really, really nice fella. In fact, a lot of the bird boxes that are up in my wood uh, actually came from Jeff and he used to call down every now and again and he really appreciated the, this place. He loved the local area and he would absolutely love the footage that's on this video. So that brings me into the second thing. That is, the first half of this video is me picking a site and setting the game cams. So if you're not interested in spotting the signs and predicting where animals are going to be and setting game cams, just skip forward to about 10 minutes. That's where the wildlife footage starts. And the wildlife footage in this particular video is very good. So with that said, I hope everybody that's watching this enjoys it. If you do, give it a thumbs up, share it anywhere you want. And if Jeff's watching this, I hope you enjoy it too, Jeff. Hello there, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be setting two game cams. I'll give you the details of them in the video description and also the pinned comment. One is no glow, one is low glow. And we're going to be trying to set them to capture some deer. Now, since I got my game cams many, many months ago, I've had them set all over the place. Haven't had one deer on any of them. And that absolutely amazes me because everywhere I walk, I see signs of them. And this time I think I'm gonna leave the cameras out for a very long time to all but guarantee that there's one or two deer captured on photo or on film. Now, as usual, I'm gonna be explaining to you why I'm setting them in the specific places that I set them. And that'll have to do with the tracks and signs that I see. I'll run through the actual camouflaging of the cameras and then we'll leave them. Okay, on to the first site. I'm in a really secluded part of the wood now. Here we've got loads of deer muck. Just see it all over there. Great big pile of it there and that's very, very fresh. More there. They've been coming through here a lot by the looks of things. Got a bit of a track going down here. I've also got another one going across here, so I think somewhere around about here would be a good point to set the camera. Got somewhere that could be used as a marking post for foxes. Could use that as well. There's a bit of a clear patch. This is a good place. Yes, it looks like there's a lot going on in this particular spot. So I'm going to try and set the camera somewhere to take in all of this bank side. Hopefully we'll get a deer on it. Although it is in a very secluded part of the wood, I'm still going to try and hide the camera the best I can because just in case somebody comes through they don't really want to see it strapped to a tree because it's going to be hello what's this thank you very much so really all of these obvious trees are out that would have been a nice place to set it just up here looking down towards this intersection of these two trails but I think I'm going to set it up there somewhere possibly underneath here or underneath here or here and that'll be looking back at this fairly busy zone. This one is the low glow camera, 12 megapixel. Okay, that's pretty well hidden in there. You see it's got three sensors on this particular one. It'll be that middle sensor, the big black one. That'll be what picks up most movement. And that's practically invisible and I'm maybe seven feet, perhaps eight feet away from it. Now the important thing is to disguise all the way around it, but leave the lights, the camera and the sensors clear. The last thing you want is some leaf flapping in front of the sensors like that, constantly triggering the camera. That would be no good whatsoever. And to prevent the camera falling out, I've just stuck little twigs down the side so they're rammed into the ground, that just prevents it from falling forward. 
that one's in a lovely place and as far as human activity goes it's very very unlikely to be found and onto the second site which is about 200 yards further downstream from the first one now just behind me here we've got a river crossing site or more specifically a stream crossing site just about there there's a series of trails up on that far bank side they converge into one and that's that one come down here over the stream go up the bank side and then they split off into two or three different ways this is a good convergence point and there's one of these trees here has a very very convenient hole in the base of it I'm gonna set the camera in there if I can and try and get some river crossing shots now this would be an absolutely perfect place to put the camera and it should give us some beautiful shots of the deer crossing the stream if this will fit in there okay this one's not going in here ah where we're gonna put it probably a little bit too obvious there I'm just going to keep it in place with little sticks so it doesn't fall flat Okay, I can hardly see that on the viewfinder, so I think that's pretty good. Right, there we are, approximately six to seven feet away, just over two meters, and that's pretty well hidden. Obviously the side sensors, again, aren't going to do much. It'll be that middle one, that's the one that will do most of the triggering. But that's pretty well hidden, I like the look of that. And you can just about make out one of the trails there. Well, there's been a lot of disturbance in the leaves the other one goes off there so it comes over the stream splits off and when you look at where the crossing is it's actually two trails come up here meet and they head away up this bank side here our camera is in there looking out onto the convergence point Right, here we are at the site of the first camera. I thought it had actually been stolen for a minute, but I can see it just up here. There you go. Probably taking my picture as we speak. Let's take a look. And according to this, it's taken 112 photos and videos. Some of those would have been now, some of these would have been when I was actually setting it up and walking away. Should be other ones though. I'll turn that off. This one was very, very successful. We definitely got deer on this and there's other things as well. I'll show you the best of the pictures towards the end of the video, but this has been very successful. It's a very good place, but only been out for three weeks I did say I was gonna leave it for a month which is four weeks but I had word from my father yesterday who said that the hunt were gonna meet in my local village when they meet there's always one or two fellas creeping about in the woods whether they're meant to be there or not and they generally fill in the badger holes fill in the fox holes make it difficult for the fox to escape I'm not a fan of the hunt and I wouldn't trust them to leave one of these alone or return it to me if they saw it so I've come a week early to collect the camera I just hope the other one is still there now before I collect this other camera it bears repeating that this place where I had both of the cameras set isn't baited at all uh, so it isn't a feed station or anything like that what I'm trying to do in this series of videos is to use my knowledge of tracks and signs to predict where an animal is going to be and also kind of predict what animals I'm going to get on the film and also on the pictures as well from the game cams. This one has been very successful. 
Be interesting to see what's on the other one though. Okay, we're just coming up to where the other game cam was, which was in here. I can't see it, but I'm presuming it's still there. And in this little sandbar here, we've got some tracks. That's not much of a one, but that's deer. It's two parts of the hoof splayed out like that, so it's heading that direction. Oh, and our camera's still there. Get in there. I was really pleased with the way I hit this one. Take a look at that. Look at that. What a little beauty, yeah? Let's take a look and see what we've got in this one. Oh, yeah, man. We've got some beautiful pictures on this. And I've got my father on it as well. <laughs> He obviously didn't see the camera. <laughs> this is probably one of the best results I've had so far from the game cams. Both these places were really, really good. I'm especially pleased with this one, the way it's framed the shots. You'll see what I mean now.
Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you want to check out my game cam videos, just look at the, oh God, what's it called? Pond Guru versus Nature trail cam playlist that I've got on my channel. Just visit the channel, scroll down. Most of my trail cam videos are on there, including some reviews that I've done. And I'm adding to that all the time because I love using trail cams. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, yes. So happy. <coughs> that happy. <laughs>